ready. We're going? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Pat Graham. Um, I'm welcome. Dr. Yura Kalyani. Namaste. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, the webinar. And uh, I thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I know at 6 p.m. in India, and uh, here we are in Mississauga, Canada, where it's the uh, morning, 8.30 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Real Life Hospital, Dr. Avtar and Dr. Sandeep for organizing this uh, platform for us to share ideas, thoughts, and uh, knowledge with everybody. Uh, so we're really happy to be here uh, with uh, everybody today. So let's start with some introduction. Uh, Dr. Pat, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, as I said, I'm Dr. Pat Graham. I'm a chiropractor by trade. Um, how I got into that, uh, I was a professional athlete playing uh, ice hockey over here. I know you guys play a lot of field hockey, but we play ice hockey on skates. And uh, uh, at 23 years old, I had my first low back surgery. And at 23 years old, my career was done. And then a week after that, uh, my mom went into the hospital just for a simple diagnostic test that they used to do called a myelogram. And uh, she reacted with the dye, had a cerebral hemorrhage and passed away at 44 years old. So I was like, man, there's gotta be something else, you know, some other way to do stuff. So that's why I started looking into physical medicine. And I decided that, uh, you know what? Chiropractic was the way to go. Started working with professional sports teams and professional athletes. And then what I realized is that chiropractic isn't the only answer. So a team approach is the most important thing in this whole thing. So. In our clinic here at the core in, in Mississauga, Canada, Toronto, Canada, we, um, we have chiropractic, physiotherapy, massage, acupuncture, osteopathy, uh, chiropathy, which is a foot specialist, and uh, we, we really try and have a full team approach. We even have a naturopath which does nutrition and stuff, so it's a full team approach here, and I think everyone has certain pieces of the puzzle, and we try and put the puzzle together and look after that. Here comes Ira, she's going to introduce herself. Um, so um, I'm very happy to be uh, back with my Indian friends, uh, though it's live, it's virtual, but I'm really happy to be here. So uh, um, most of my friends would know, but I'm going to just quickly introduce myself that uh, I did my bachelor's in physiotherapy from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences in uh, Bangalore. And uh, then after I completed my master's in hospital administration, and uh, soon I was into my business. I had my own clinic, worked with uh, some uh, hospitals, really good hospitals. And uh, then um, six years later, I landed up in Canada and uh, very lucky to be a part of the core group. And uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, privilege to be working with Dr. Pat uh, because it's very interesting to interact with him because it's um, almost it's more than 28 years of your career. Yeah, that's right. So it's uh, more than 20 year, 28 years of his career, and every day we get to hear new stories, uh, new uh, new new cases, and uh, it's sometimes it's challenging, which is actually which actually makes it more interesting. Uh, so and uh, the fun part about uh, being connected with the real life is uh, not only a doctor, I'm working with him now professionally, Dr. Aftar, but uh, we have studied together. I remember we used to sit on the last bench um, after our lectures and used to discuss all what was, uh, what was uh, done um, in the lectures. And uh, now I, I'm here with Dr. Aftar and uh, uh, working with him. I'm, I'm really happy and excited to be here. Uh, so getting back to our topic, um, I'm going to pass over uh, to you, Dr. Pat. Okay. So you take over the charge, and then I will be, I'm still going to be here. And then once Dr. Pat has done his part, then uh, I will be here. And uh, I request everybody to, I know you, I can see a lot of uh, you people. Um, uh, namaste, everybody. Uh, we're getting a lot of namastes. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, we will be sitting together, Dr. Pat and I, at the end of the session for maybe 10 to 15 minutes to answer any questions you have because it's kind of hard to read at the same time and answer. So we'll go through our session and we'll share everything and then uh, at the later end we will sit and uh, we will chat with you. Okay, so over to you Dr. Pat. Thanks, Yura. So we're talking about spine health today and I really wanted to break that down uh, to what we really focus on here to look at, at overall spine health. We really like to focus on the pelvis. 
Uh, to us, the pelvis, its function and dysfunction, plays a huge role in not only spine health, but it can affect you all the way down to the feet and all the way up to the shoulders. So today we're going to look at spinal function and spinal dysfunction and uh, relate that to, to spine health as well too. Okay, With the spine, um, we look at it as, as sort of the seat of, of all causes for so many things. Uh, you can have knee pain, you can have ankle pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, and then low back pain of course. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, the pelvis basically, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, professionals here, but I also understand that there's a lot of uh, lay people on, on uh, today's uh, broadcast. So I'm going to try and keep it uh, simple for everybody. But the pelvis essentially is made up of, of three, um, three bony structures. You've got the two ilii and the sacrum, which includes the coccyx. And then you have the sacroiliac joints in between, okay, and then the pubis joint. And if, I'm hoping you guys can all see this, but if you look at this, uh, this skeleton, this is one of our patients that didn't pay their bill, so we've got this available to us. But if you look at the skeleton, all these separate red areas on the pelvis are all separate muscles that come off the pelvis. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on here. And these two joints here, the sacroiliac joints, are really unique joints because they have two parts to them, an upper and a lower part, and both parts have separate types of cartilage. So there's unique movement that takes place through the sacroiliac joints. And the motion of the, of the pelvis is called nutation. And that nutation is basically like a, a 3D figure eight for when we're walking and moving, it should be a 3D figure eight motion. And quite often what happens is that motion gets affected, okay? And there's numerous causes that can lead to that, that situation. Um, basically, I think the biggest thing that happens and why we get pelvic dysfunction is because we're such a one-sided species. The human being or us human beings are so one-sided, okay? And you can understand from a sports perspective, if you're a cricketer, you're always throwing with the same arm. If you're a, um, you know, batting or throwing, whatever, it's very one-sided, okay? But for those that aren't into sports, we're like, well, we're, everything seems fairly balanced, but it, it's really not. When we sit, we favor one butt cheek over the other. When we walk, every time we take the stride, we always start with the same side, okay? And then unfortunately, especially during these times of this pandemic, um, the, we're sitting way too much, okay? So that pelvis gets out of whack. Basically, we weren't designed to sit as much as we do. You can have the best ergonomic setup in the world and, and it's still not going to be good enough because we weren't designed to sit. We should be fighting, foraging, and procreating. So that's what we're designed to be doing, okay? So what's interesting about the pelvis is depending on where, when that pelvis becomes dysfunctional, depending on where that affects, you can have a bunch of different situations. Um, if you have certain areas of the pelvis affected, you can get hip pain. If you have certain areas of the pelvis affected, you can get the low back pain as we talked about. Um, so much musculature comes off the pelvis, it can lead to knee pain, shoulder pain. So we really believe that by keeping this pelvis moving properly, um, it may, it's gonna make a huge difference for you, okay? So <clears throat> what we do here at the clinic to create function with the pelvis is we have several things that we do. We, we, we use chiropractic, we use physiotherapy. As I said, we really take a team approach to this whole thing, okay? So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna present a case to you guys, okay, um, with regard to pelvic function. And it's a really interesting case because, um, as I said, so many things can lead to pelvic function. One of the dysfunction, one of the things that can lead to pelvic dysfunction is certainly pregnancy. You're carrying around this child for you know up to 10 months that can really lead to pelvic dysfunction so we have uh, one of our cases here today is um, a woman that has recently had a child and uh, labor she had some issues during labor issues during her pregnancy and now she's got some issues in the low back because of her pelvic dysfunction okay so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we would take this case and treat it right from the beginning uh, as far as the assessment goes, and then right into the treatment component, okay? So, Harmeet, if you are ready to go, I'm going to bring you in, okay? Don't be shy. I'll try not to. <laughs> this is Harmeet, okay? Harmeet had a beautiful baby girl, how long ago now? Two months. Two months ago. 
and uh, she had some issues during labor, as I said, and she's doing well now, but this is going to be your second treatment with us, okay? Uh, Ira, can you just make sure with the camera here yeah. that we're, you can see what we're doing here as we go yeah. this, okay? So I just want to make sure everybody's watching okay, so... Um, How are we doing there, guys? Everyone, you getting some feedback there? I kind of just topped. Uh, sorry, one second. Um, can you see it? Okay. Yes, I'm a real we're all good? Sorry. Yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah. good. Thanks, guys. Sorry for the delay there. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do is when we're looking at the pelvis, do you want to maybe take that out of the, uh, the, the okay. tripod there? Just pull, the, uh, pull that side piece. This? Yeah, pull that and open. Sorry about that, guys. No problem, guys. This is our first one, so you're gonna have to let us go with any of that. So when we when we're looking at the pelvis, the first thing we're gonna look is is for a static situation. See what's happening statically. So we're gonna have her turn this way, okay? And I'm gonna look at the heights of her, the crest of her pelvis on both sides. And the other day when she was in, the right crest of her pelvis was significantly lower than the left crest. Today, it's still lower, but not as low as the other day. So we check that out. Then we go on to what's called the PSIS, which are the, the posterior components of the SI joints. We check that out. She's still twisted with her um, the right side coming back and down relative to the left side, which is forward and up, okay? So that's telling us what's going on there. We would ask her to do some mo movements to see what where she's feeling some irritation. So let's have you bend forward as if you're gonna to touch your toes. How's that today, Hermie? It's, it's better than the other day. And where are you, somewhere. show me where you're feeling that. All throughout, and it kind of wraps around the front. Right, and the reason it's wrapping around the front is because her ilio iliopsoas muscles, the muscles that flex your hips, uh, were really affected during this whole pregnancy scenario. And the iliopsoas place, is, it's the seat of so many different causes of issues We'll take a look at that in a second too. Come on back up. And then we're gonna have her come back into extension. So you're gonna come back towards me with the upper back. Okay. And how's that feeling through that low back area? It's okay through the low back. Okay, through the low back, okay. So the other day when she went into extension, she had a lot of pain in the joints of the low back. And the reason she gets, a lot of times with low back pain, you get low back pain because the pelvis is designed for rotational type movements. Whereas the low back, the lumbar spine, is designed mostly for flexion and extension. So when the pelvis stops doing rotation, okay, all of a sudden that rotational movement has to take place in the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine says, basically says, you know, flips you the bird and says, screw you, I'm not going to do that. So that's when you end up getting pain in that low back. So today her facets are moving much better in the low back, but we still have to get this pelvis moving properly. So the other thing, in an initial case, what we would look at, we would look at, we'd look at her static foot position. If she's over pronating statically, that can lead to a long leg, short leg, if she's over pronating on one side more than the other. And then we would also do a gait analysis, a um, dynamic gait analysis, where we'd have her walk up and down the hall and just watch how her feet function. Because again, over pronation that's worse on one side, which is the foot falling in, could lead to a long leg, short leg, which can really throw this pelvis out of whack. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is have her do a little marching routine. So I'm going to have you turn and face here, hold on to there. And what I'm doing here, I'm coming on those landmarks on the back of the pelvis called the PSIS. And I'm going to have you march. So bring your right leg up as if you're marching and down and left leg and down and right leg and down. So the other day when we were doing this, this right side wasn't moving at all. Today, it's, it's moving, but still not as well as the, as the left side, okay? So we know that she's still got some issues with the pelvis here. So let's go into right away, we're gonna take you into what we would do as far as getting this pelvis moving, okay? So, come on over here, Harmeet. And we're gonna get her, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get her to go face down on the table. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. You so, okay if I flip the camera so that sure. it look yeah, better? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Okay. So because of what's going on with the pelvis, and, and we, we know her meat from previous visits, so I know that she doesn't have an anatomical leg length difference. 
Uh, we will test that in initial patients to see if there is an anatomical difference, but we know that she doesn't. But because of the pelvis function, because the pelvis is twisted this way, it puts the le left leg as a bit of a long leg and the right leg becomes a, a bit of a short leg. So even statically here, when we check out her leg lengths, I don't know if you can get a picture of that there. You can see there's her right leg is significantly shorter than that left leg. So and that's, sure again, that's not here. anatomical. That's strictly because of the pelvis. And also you can see that it wants to turn out this way a little bit. And that's because of some of the musculature up in the glutes here, okay? So we're really big here. Uh, I was given this when I first started working with my first practitioner, and I, I wasn't made aware of this in school, but he loved it, and I've, I've fallen in love with it, and I, I teach all our practitioners here is with what's called SOT blocking. So what we're doing here, and you don't need blocks like this, you can just use folded up towels too to do this uh, technique. So because her pelvis is twisted like so, okay, I'm going to take the left one and I'm going to put it under the front of her hip on the ASIS area, okay, the front of the pelvis there. So that one is trying to take this pelvis back and down. And then the right one we're going to put on the top of her thigh, okay. So you can see there's two different heights here, so we're trying to take the pelvis this way. So just lying like this can be comfortable and sometimes we'll send patients home and tell them to do this just by putting some socks and running shoes or folding up towels like we talked about and creating their own little blocks. And then I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna bring her, I'm gonna exaggerate where her right leg was. So now because of the blocks, I've got her right leg longer than the left leg. Okay, we're gonna exaggerate that while we treat her. So while she's lying like this, we're gonna do a bunch of soft tissue work, okay? So we can, depends on the patient, a lot of times we'll just use uh, manual soft tissue work and we'll do internal external rotation of the hip. So right now we're doing some internal rotation of the hip and basically I'm working that key muscle called the piriformis, which can, as you know, many of you know, can lead to not only hip pain, but also pain all the way down the leg because that sciatic nerve uh, can either run underneath it, through it, or over top of it. And depending on the person, that can lead to a lot of sciatic type pain, okay? So we're working to loosen up the uh, in, internal rotation here. Then we're gonna go into external rotation and we'll get up into the glute, glute mean men muscles, okay? The underneath glute muscles. And a little bit, a key one here is that tensor fascial atom muscle, okay? Which is one of the hip um, abductors. And what happens there is if this muscle gets tight, and we see it a lot, this muscle gets tight and it pulls on a band, the iliotibial band, which goes right down into the knee. This person could get a lot of knee pain because of that, okay? And then we would do the same thing on the other side, but on the other side, I'm gonna show you another technique that we use. <clears throat> we have a, a massage gun that we found really beneficial called the Hyperbolt. Some people, particularly women, find this a little too painful or a little too ticklish, but we've used this on our meat before and it basically fires at a frequency. And we just do the same thing. We can... So that's a little more tender than my fingers are, right? <laughs> she's kind of printing. <laughs> so, yeah, she's a little bit here, but she knows she's on camera, so she can't jump off the table. And she might have done before. So, uh, she'd be stuck with me like this kid right now. She's being a really good patient. <laughs> And she's not normal, so that's uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So anyway, we're going to loosen this up this way, and then we're going to again take it into external rotation. And I don't know if you noticed, when we were doing the left side, we're trying to work down this way. Now that we're doing the right side, because we're trying to shift that pelvis, we're working up from the bottom to the top. And you can see in her right side, actually, the reason she's flinching more even if I did this on the left side, her right side is just that much more tender because of that right side of pelvic dysfunction. So the muscles have gone into a little bit of a protective spasm there. And because of the COVID situation and just having a baby, you know, it's been two months since she's been able to get in and get into treatment, so things have really tightened up. Okay, so that would be to loosen that up. Okay. okay, she's breathing now. Yeah. And then we would also do the uh, two other real key muscles, or what are called the quadratus lamorum muscles, which come off the pelvis 
and they come up into the rib cage, those can get very tight, particularly on the side where that pelvis has gone down and back. So I get in here and do some soft tissue work and I can find some trigger points in here and, I, and she's, yeah, this isn't pleasant for her. But we just, you just work, I usually say I work to like a three out of 10 on the pain scale because they can sort of manage that, but we can have some good effect. And all I'm doing here is just some trigger point work, okay? And because it's tight on this side, I'll do some approximation. Try and get, by doing the approximation, try and loosen up that QL muscle, okay? And then the other thing I would do, we have a unit here called uh, the Pro Adjuster. A lot of people, some people, you know, as you know, as a professional, some there are a lot of people uh, love spinal manipulation, but there are a small percentage of the population that really don't like spinal manipulation. So we found this tool, and it's called the Pro Adjuster, and basically it fires at a frequency that's a subharmonic of the body's own frequency. So we can actually use this to create some motion through the joints, and we can also use it for some soft tissue work. Would you like me to focus on the screen? Do you want to show some? Yeah, the, basically what we're doing here is, right now we're going to do some soft tissue work and joint work on the pelvis. So we can control how much force we put through, and uh, the frequency is generally set up by the machine itself. Okay. So to try and create some motion through the pelvis here, and again, if you remember, we've got her set up to move this way. So on the left side, I'm going to work from the top down, and this is just like a little jackhammer. And she'll tell you that that's pretty comfortable, eh, Hermie? Yeah. Yeah, it's, this is, people find this very comfortable. So we're trying to work up and, or just from the top to the bottom down that sacral iliac joint to introduce some motion here. And I'll do a couple passes with that on the, the non-effective side. And you got to remember, the reason we're doing both sides is because the pelvic, pelvis uh, works in unison, so you have to address both sides. Now on the right side, I'm going to work from the bottom to the top. And is that a little more tender on that side of me? Yeah. So this, this is a joint that's, that's not moving well and it's irritated. So this will be a little more tender, but it's still quite comfortable for the patient. Okay. And then I'm going to tr try and take this side of the pelvis up this way. So I get down here. This way, and then I'm going to stabilize here and come down on the side. And for some people, that may that may be enough just to create motion through that pelvic area. Okay, but what I want to do now, which is what the chiropractic specialty is, or a lot of physios now are starting to do spinal manipulation or manual manipulation, which is great. I, I it's essential to to getting people moving properly. And it doesn't matter to me whether it's physio, power or whatever, as long as it's being done properly, it, it's, it's key. So we're gonna take her off the blocks, okay? And we'll just do a quick check and see how we did there. So just right now, the leg lengths are a little closer together. And when we come up on here, it's a little better, still down here. So we're gonna do um, a manipulation to get this pelvis moving, okay? so. Uh, Harmony, I want you to turn on your left side so you're facing me. Good. So on this side, okay, the side that was affected, if you remember it was twisted back this way, so now I'm going to try and take it this way when we adjust her, okay? So come on off that shoulder for me. I'm going to drop this down a little bit. And the key is, you got to really feel for the patient, get them to relax. Hermit and I have worked together long enough, she's pretty good about relaxing with me. We let her roll to the edge of the table. She's going to feel like she's going to fall off the table, but in 28 years I haven't lost one yet. <laughs> Although there's always a first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I come in, come on over here, Eric, so you can see this from the back side. Here? Yeah, come sorry, here back? So you can I'm see sorry. This here. So we're trying to take this portion of the pelvis up this way. So I come up in here like this and just drop it in. Good. I don't know if you guys heard that. Mm -hmm. A real nice pop through the sacroiliac joint there. Now a lot of people would be satisfied with that, but 
Me knowing that there's two parts to the joint, I want to make sure we get both parts. So I'm going to take that right through. There we go. Oh, Beautiful. Perfect. So that's the right side we got moving. Now, as I said, the pelvis works in unison, so we want to get that other side and make sure it's moving properly too. So come on over on the other side. Okay. So now this side of the pelvis, I want to make sure it's going this way, okay, as opposed to this way. So I take this a little different contact here, and we just come up here, good, and I'm going to again take it right through, beautiful. So just one part of the SI joint wasn't moving on that side. So that's getting the structural component moving, okay. Um, a lot of times the stuff I did to, to do the soft tissue work, Dr. Ira would do that um, she'd come in, and, and it doesn't matter who sees who, we all sort of work together and do different components here. Um, one thing I generally will do though, because I really see this as, uh, as a physio specialty is, I will now pass it over to Dr. Ira to do, we're really big here on uh, trying to get people looking after themselves as quickly as possible. So even on the very first visit, we introduce uh, some, uh, depending on the situation, icing or heat, mostly ice on if it's an acute situation. And then we get them exercising right away because motion is the lotion. We got to get people moving. And that's the key to getting uh, physical uh, function going again. So Ira will now take over and show some stuff that, that she would do. And in this case, it's, it's really cool because we've been talking about the pelvis and we're, she's going to, I think you're going to focus on the pelvic floor yeah. today, right? Yeah. Because our meats just had the baby, okay? The pelvic floor takes a beating, and uh, so Ira is going to focus on that, and it'll talk. She'll talk a little bit about what we do for her low back pain as well, too. Okay. Okay. I'll be back with you guys shortly. Thank you very much, Harmony. Thank you. Stay there, Kendall. Okay. Just gonna, gonna guys. Just back. uh. We just want to put it here. Uh yeah, I'll just uh I'll just put it here. Uh. It's it's pretty, yeah. Yeah, really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you want me to move to something. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So um, now our patient, her meat is uh, structurally aligned and pretty nice and loose. So. Uh, as Dr. Pat explained, here at the core, our main aim is to work as a team so that uh, not only patient is get, gets rid of the pain, but also uh, uh, we educate them to manage their lifestyle accordingly so that they don't have to suffer with the pain again. And they don't have to visit us too often. Not that we don't like seeing our patients, just uh, we don't like them in pain. So uh, basically uh, what happens, especially in Harmeet's case, because uh, she became a mom just two months ago, so uh, pelvic uh, dysfunction, um, it, uh, there, are, there could be muscles which are too weak or too tight. So uh, to, to make them uh, loose and to make them nice and strong, we have uh, various exercises, which I'm pretty sure uh, everybody's aware of. Uh, but to, to uh, people who are not practitioners and who are here with us today, I would like to just, uh, I'm not gonna go in the detail in the deep anatomy, but uh, I'm gonna just, uh, uh, try and touch the base with it. So, uh, so we want to, uh, the signs and symptoms of, uh, like more especially in women after giving birth, the pelvic floor muscles uh, tend to like uh, be very weak. So uh, the signs and symptoms could be, uh, first, of, first and foremost, would be, it could be lower back pain, which is very common and you won't even think about it that it could be related to your pelvis. But yes, it is. And uh, then the most common would be um, like incontinence, could be urinary or uh, even stool incontinence. And uh, when you cough or sneeze, you feel a little, uh, a little like uh, that you're not able to control your pee, which is a very, very like a normal sign and symptom in, uh, in uh, pelvic uh, floor dysfunction. So uh, the first exercise we uh, usually give to, it could be males or females, but we uh, give them Kegels exercise, which could be done laying just the way her meat is right now. 
and uh, if you could bend your knees and are you able to do it just let me know if you're not comfortable yeah, yeah, doing it okay and uh, bring it closer to your butts I'm just gonna put this down okay so it's pretty simple you are just laying flat on the bed and she's gonna lift her glutes off the table and you have to clench your pelvis you have to feel those muscles tightening up bring it up more more if you don't then it's gonna hurt your back so you could be doing that obviously you can't see any contraction but the patient who would be doing it will feel the the tightness that you're trying to tight to tighten those muscles which are used to pee you can relax so this is one part and the most effective would be we want to isolate those muscles uh, which we really uh, want to get uh, those uh, strong would be when you when you go and uh, when you're going and you have the urge to pee you you stop uh, when you pee and stop pee and like you kind of give it pauses so you're isolating exactly those muscles where we where we like we're gonna work on them we want to make them strong so that's uh, that's for the kegels part uh, now talking about the lower back so uh, at this point Hermes Hermes muscles which especially the uh, muscles which are uh, which support the pelvis are nice and loose especially the buttocks area the the tfo the hamstrings but we want to make sure that we keep them strong to hold this pelvis because it is the shape of a bowl it's like a basin shape so you those muscles help and support your pelvis if those those are not strong it creates a lot of pressure on your lower back and uh, it, it creates uh, it creates very uh, very uh, uncomfortable uh, pain and stiffness. So we want to keep those glutes, those glutes nice and loose, those hammies and quads nice and strong. So I would like to show you some very basic stretches which we can, we, we usually prescribe the patient on the first visit itself uh, because it's very, you can even do those stretches while watching TV. So um, uh, Hermit has not yet started with her stretches. She's not uh, back to her routine yet. So I'm going to demonstrate those stretches. Uh, is that okay or you sure. want yeah, to sure. you. You do it? Okay, sure. So she's ready to do it. Okay. All right. Just refresh my memory again. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to just move the camera a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first stretch would be just sitting uh, with... Just sitting with, make sure that you're sitting on a chair, which uh, where you can uh, you're, uh, nicely rest, your feet are rested on the ground. And this is called, we call it the figure of four stretch. Uh, where she, you're gonna be, so now that's the figure of four stretch where her one foot is over the, over the top of the other knee. So you're gonna stabilize one hand over the ankle so that uh, this is uh, nice and stabilized and you're not uh, moving, just move a little bit forward to the edge of the table. And you'll sit with a neutral spine. You don't want to hyperextend. You don't want to flex as of now. You're just sitting with a neutral spine, uh, sucking your core. And now you want to try and put pressure here, where you will. Sorry, I'm going to go this side. So when you're, are you feeling the stretch right here? Okay. Now this is this is the most basic stretch we give those uh, give patients. But if you want to feel a little bit more stretch, keep your uh, spine straight and just hinge over a little bit. You should be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Are you okay there? Yeah. Okay. So we could hinge a little bit more if you want to feel that stretch more uh, intense. So that's our first stretch where we call it the figure of four push stretch. Now the second one is the pulling stretch where you're gonna you're gonna just join your hands and uh, is that visible? Uh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. And now she's gonna try and bring this knee to the opposite shoulder. So try and pull this to your shoulder and then turn into it. Yes, and bring that up a little bit more. Do you feel the stretch? Where do you feel yeah. it? Um, in the buttocks and just a little bit. Perfect, more. that's where we want the stretch to be felt. So, and uh, you can relax. So I want patients to hold it for 15 to 20 seconds, each side and repeat it for five times. Could be done twice a day, just like, just, uh, like right now. You guys can uh, just try it with uh, watching me at the same time. And um, so this is uh, two basic stretches. Now, this is a seated stretch, but you can also do it uh, while you're laying on the bed. So we want to try that. I'm just going to take that off. I don't know how good I'll be at it, but I'll try it. That's okay. Sure OK. Are we there? 
a little bit more. How's that? That, yeah, that should be good. Okay, okay that should be good. Okay, just continuing with our figure of four stretch, I'm going to show, so bend your knees for me and put one leg on top of the other. There we go. And now she's going to hold, you're going to hug this th uh, thigh here and just bring it to your chest. So she's going to feel an intense stretch right in this glute here. And again, you breathe, you suck in your core, keep it tight and breathe and hold it for 15 to 20 seconds, repeat it five times each side. So that's our third glute stretch. Okay, we can rest. Now staying in the same position, I would wanna, um, wanna tell all the viewers there who are practitioners, non-practitioners, I practice it daily before getting out of the bed in the morning. And uh, it's very, very effective to get your spine in motion before you're ready for the day. So just grabbing your knee and bringing it to the chest. It's just simply called knee to chest stretch. Would you like to perform that? So I usually tell patients to do one at a time first, hold it for 15 seconds, and then relax. And then we do the other one. Perfect. Do you feel the stretch for me? I do. Perfect. Relax. And then we can advance to both at the same time. There we go. Perfect. So she should be feeling the stretch right in her buttocks, uh, which is going to help loosen those buttocks, uh, which supports the pelvis. We can relax. That's our knee to chest stretch. So um, these are the stretches which we usually uh, give the patients on the first and the second time uh, because we want them to be prepared. Our, our aim is to get them stronger. So our first step would be stretches and the second step, step would be a strengthening exercises and core stability exercises. Uh, so I also uh, introduce, I want to introduce hip flexor stretches, which is uh, usually on the, depending upon how the patient is doing, second or third visit. Uh, and um, you wanna do it with me? Sure, remind okay. me though, I don't remember. Uh, okay, yeah. no, come on up for the table. I'll remind you, I can do it with you. Okay, I'm just gonna move the camera here. All right, I'll demonstrate first for you and then you can do it with the, you can just show them again. Sure. Okay. okay, so. Okay guys, so I'm gonna put one foot forward and the foot on the back, I wanna go on my toe. I wanna make sure it's, um, it's on my, oops. Yeah. Uh, well, can I look for yeah. the others? How do I do that? Uh, this, yeah, this back flip. Right. Sorry guys, one second. And now you can see it. Oh, right. we turn on the flash. Oh, yeah, the flash came on for some reason. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. So, is that okay? Yep. All right. So, I'm going to go like this. I, I usually keep my hands on the waist to make sure my spine is neutral. I'm not hyperextending or flexing. So, keeping my uh, toe a little bit internally rotated, which are, there were, so, so that we can feel the stretch even more. So in this position, I'm gonna tuck my core so that as tight as I can and fire those glutes, squeeze those glutes tight and hard so that I can feel the stretch more. And then push a little bit forward and I, I feel the stretch even more. Now you wanna make sure here, three key points. Uh, core sucked in, glutes really tight, firing. And the third, knee should never go past your toe. So make sure you're doing that, holding it for 15 seconds, and repeat it maybe five times each side. This is your first uh, hip flexor stretch. And then the second stretch would be knee on the ground, where I usually put a foam or a rolled towel, but I'll just quickly show it. And bring this foot forward. Again, three key things. First is sucking in your core, squeezing those glutes, and pushing forward. And I'm feeling it right here making sure knee is not going past your toe and you're not hyperextending your back. And again, 15 to 20 seconds, and you repeat it both sides. So this is the second hip flexor stretch. Now the third one, which is more of like a quad stretch and you also feel it in your hip flexor, that would be, I can do it, um, I'm gonna do it here. With the lowest I could go, okay. <laughs> All right, 
So I want to put the, my toes on the edge of the table and go with the knee on the ground. And our, my aim is to bring my butt to the heel. And I feel a right intense stretch in my quads. And also, if I suck my core in and keep my back neutral, I also do feel it in my hip flexor. That is my third hip flexor stretch. And again, holding it for 15, 20, uh, 20 seconds. I recommend to put a towel or a foam um, underneath your knee because you don't want to hurt your knee while you're uh, fixing something else. So, How many repetitions should they be doing here? Uh, so uh, I would say five, five repetitions each side and twice a day. Okay, great. Okay, so now we have actually prepared our muscles to, uh, so that we can start with some strengthening stuff uh, for our lower back pains. Also, I would like to mention uh, for uh, people like uh, people usually get low back pain, and uh, everybody of us used to think that you'll grab a heat pack and put the heat so that it helps relax the muscles, and you you start feeling better. But what happens when the next morning you wake up, you are really stiff. You are you feel the pain even more because uh, we uh, ice is always the safest option. You want to switch to ice rather than heat. Because you feel good at the time, because you I know that the blood the blood circulation starts uh, getting normal with the heat flow, heat, and uh, the inflammation kind of just vanishes for that time. But later on, when you wake up in the morning, the inflammation has settled even more, and you feel pain even more. So you want to use ice pack instead of a heat pack whenever you feel lower back pain, uh, especially in the acute cases, the first and the second day, and until you see a practitioner until you, uh, they, they assess you and they tell you what to do to switch to heat or to contrast. So it totally depends upon different cases, but I would go right to uh, doing an ice pack. So I would say 15 minutes on of it for an ice pack and just leave it off 30 minutes, making sure it's always wrapped in a towel and it's not right on the skin because you may get an ice burn too. A lot of people don't know, but they, when they come and they say, oh, there's a rash here because they left the ice pack right on the skin for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and it gives you an ice burn, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so coming back to the topic where we want to do the, um, some strengthening exercises, those are also too basic. We can go for days talking about spine, core, and everything, but today we're just trying to touch uh, just the basics today. Okay, because I know even my mom and dad are watching, and uh, <laughs> I would like them to start with these exercises too. So, all right. Um, uh, do you want to um, talk for a little bit? I'm just going to go grab a yoga mat so that I can uh, demonstrate uh, a little bit of core strengthening exercise. Okay, and, sure. Uh, yeah, you can just uh, you can flip the camera if you want. That you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Yuri's just going to grab a, uh, a yoga mat so she can demonstrate some of the uh, the core strengthening exercises. But I th I think I'm hoping what you guys see here is some things you can take away and. Uh, for the professionals out there, <coughs> excuse me, maybe implement some stuff right into your uh, right into your workplace as soon as you uh, get back to work, and then for the people, for the lay people out there, um, some of these stretches and stuff are just great. Even if you don't have back pain, you want to make sure you keep your core functioning properly, so that you you it not as we said, not only does it affect your back, your core affects and the pelvis affects so many things, and this is this is the the key area to keep functioning, and if you can keep this core area functioning properly, you're going to prevent a lot of things and you're going to feel a lot healthier over uh, a period of time, okay? So these things are, even if you're not suffering from an injury, you can be doing these, uh, these stretching exercises, okay? And as I said earlier, we all sit way too much, so it's important that we, we keep moving. Um, what if uh, we'll, I'll take it to the gym okay. and show some exercises? All right. Okay. Let's work uh, our way to the gym. Uh, Can you just follow her? Okay, okay great. Okay, perfect. I'm going to get Joe hooked up in here, okay? Okay, great. Okay, this is our nice little gym where we uh, help our patients to get some rehab done. So, yeah, you are pretty familiar with the equipment, I believe. Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna start with the first step. I'm gonna go this way so that you can get much more better. So I'm gonna start with the cat camel uh, exercise. There, I know the name is funny, but yeah. So you'll go on all fours. Now, I wanna 
these are basic stretches. A lot of people are doing the actions right, but they're not engaging the muscles. So what happens is they, are, they have been doing it for months and they don't feel the difference because they are not using the muscles which we are trying to strengthen here. So now, first of all, when you go on all fours, you wanna make sure that your hand is sitting right under your shoulder and not, you're not too far or too like, like here. You wanna have right under your shoulder and keeping your uh, feet nice and relaxed now imagine you have a soup bowl and you want to put it here and you want to make sure it doesn't fall okay so you know you're going to make a little a table for a soup now soup can rest there and now you kind of hold it breathe and then now you let the soup fall so you kind of suck your core to the spine and let your neck fall and hold it for a few seconds. Repeat it again. Up, breathe, engage your core, and down. So as in this exercise, I'm, I'm making sure that my core is tucked to the spine and my glutes are firing too. If these are not working, if these are not activated, it's not gonna do what we want it to do. So this was our first exercise, which is cat and camel. Now the second exercise, I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar of. Uh, it's called, uh, um, I remember in India, uh, we call it Superman, but here we also call it bird dog. I don't know if you guys probably call it bird dog, I'm not sure. So again, going on all fours. Now make sure you're lifting your leg up straight. I would like to point my toe down, make sure some people do this. So what happens is, you're hyperextending your back. No, you don't want to do that. Keep it neutral, toe down, and then the opposite uh, arm in the air. Now, you don't want to strain your neck by, by looking at, at that wall. You just want to keep it neutral, hold it, suck your core to the spine, fire those glutes, and hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. And then relax. And then we do it on the opposite side. Now this is challenging for people who are off balance and whose core is weak. You will, you will immediately know that, uh, oh man, I can't do it, and they'll be kind of like struggling to, uh, to balance themselves. And, and that, this is the reason why we are doing this, to help your core get stronger and to balance even uh, better. So this was the second one. Now the third one is the clamshell exercise, where we actually position our, ourselves in, in this, position. Now, what I want to try and do is bring these knees as close to my chest as I can and keeping my hand here so that I'm not rotating too back or too forward, keeping it neutral, sucking my core. And now what I want to do is keep my feet together and just open up my knees like a clamshell. And when I open that, I make sure I'm squeezing those glutes and core even more. You will feel the burn actually when you, when you repeat, when you do the uh, movements again and again. So ready? And we go. Now at this point, I'm squeezing it really hard. Parmeet is giving me looks, she's smiling because I know I have shown her these exercises and she doesn't remember any of those. You're doing such a fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a clamshell exercise. So guys, fire those muscles, fire those glutes and suck your core in. Okay, so this is our third exercise. The last I wanna show is the plank. So uh, it could be, uh, we'll start with the front plank, could be modified for the first time uh, for the beginner, and then we can advance it to a full front plank or a side plank and a combination. So let's go for a plank. Uh, by the way, I, uh, once I had a challenge with our other doctor, Dr. Ali, who's a chiropractor here, and uh, we ended up doing a three minute plank. And I won. So, That's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. That's very wow. good. <laughs> okay, so. You up for the challenge, Dr. Pat? Yeah, I'm up. Okay, then come on. Let, let's okay. do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so going on our toe. Now, again, making sure you're not up too high, not too low. You're keeping it nice and neutral. And walk your toes in. Walk your toes in. 
squeeze those glutes stuck in your core and let that neck relax. You don't want to strain your neck. So at this point, I think I can hold it for one minute and 20, 25 seconds. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> but just showing you that. So this is a great full front plank. And for the beginners, what we can do is just this plank. At the same time, tucking your core, squeezing your buttocks, and letting your neck rest. Okay, so, all right. So this would be our um, basic core strengthening. And uh, we can advance to other levels. There are lots and lots we can learn about, which we will uh, be doing in other, other webinars soon. So uh, let's get back together, Dr. Pai and uh, Sib. Are you okay with question as I down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, have me. Thank you. I'll follow you guys up. <laughs> Do you want me to read out some of the questions that people yeah, have asked? One of the questions yeah. that uh, Karn Kosla asked, I think it's when you were doing the exercises it's at the brother, gym. So oh, okay. He's probably pulling my leg. Well, which one of, well, no, it's a good question. It's a good question. Which one of these can be done safely in third trimester of pregnancy? Okay, that's because uh, the good news is my sister in law is pregnant. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> If I say anything, he's not going to listen because he thinks I'm not a real doctor. So if he would like, like to... So. She's Actually, a real doctor. Uh, in third trimester, obviously some of the stretching like knee to chest and stuff because of the baby, you're not going to be able to pull those knees up. But the seated, the great thing about those seated stretches is they can be done uh, right up until uh, birth. Um, even some of the core work, there's women that do stuff, uh, even modified core like you're a show where you're on your knees. You can do all that stuff right up until right up until it's time to have the baby, yeah, and it's yeah. actually very important. And, and, and it, actually, that brings up a real good point, though. We were talking about pelvic function. Um, in the front of the pelvis, the pubis joint, it's it it's really doesn't move a whole lot until it's time to have a baby. And if those two sacroiliac joints, the ones that we got moving on our meat, if they're moving properly, that allows for the whole birthing process to be that much easier too. And then the stronger you are through the core that also makes the birthing process that much easier as well too. Yeah. Another <laughs> another wasn't a question but it was a comment. I heard there is magic in Dr. Pat's hands. Ooh, wow. There is. He also has really great hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, everyone can uh, as far as the hair goes, you can uh, everyone can uh, stay tuned for the uh, Silver Fox Health <laughs> app that's coming soon. It is for real. For real yeah. coming soon. Yep. So we'll we'll get that out to you guys. Also, I gave him that title. <laughs> Really? Yeah. 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 Um, guys, one thing that's really important. We're, we're having fun doing this, but if if your feedback is really important, uh, I hope hopefully you guys found this really beneficial. But your feedback's important. Any subjects or topics you guys want to talk about, send it to us, and we'll we'll put together some stuff for that for you guys. Yeah, it's possible right now. Not everybody has joined us, but they'll watch the videos later, and right. then whenever you have any questions. Um, any feedbacks, any comments, how we can improvise more, and hopefully we were we were we were trying to be very clear on what we were doing. But if there's any feedback, it's more than welcome. And uh, um, that's about it. Any other questions on there, Carmen? There's no questions, but can I ask? Well, I already know the answer, yeah. but I think it'll be helpful for everybody. When you have a new injury, what's better, ice, ice, heat? Like, what what are you supposed to do? That's yeah. what you're always talking about. Oh, I just okay. About that. I wasn't listening. You, for the first 48 <laughs> to 72 hours, you can't go wrong with ice. Um, heat, as Zira explained, can, it feels really good when it's on, but it ends up creating more inflammation. And then the other key with ice too is not to leave it on any longer than 15, uh, 15 minutes. Maybe for the low back you could do 20 minutes. Yeah, sure, because yeah. there's a, a thing called the hunting response that if you leave it on for longer than 15 minutes, it actually starts to create heat. So you, wanna, you don't want to get to that point. So 15 minutes is a good rule of thumb. For more surface injuries, like an elbow or wrist, you could do just 12 minutes or 10 minutes. Okay. okay. All good. All right. So, yeah, let's say. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Again, your fine. feedback's important, and uh, 
Uh, hopefully we can do this again and maybe we will uh, see you live in India uh, yeah. in the next little bit depending on travel and stuff. So Yeah, once everything settles down we are pretty soon, uh, we, are, we, are, we already have plans to travel to India but just waiting for everything uh, to settle down and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to share all the information live with you guys. Uh, thank you all for joining and again thanks to Dr. Uptara and Dr. Sandeep for doing this uh, for us and uh, we'll be very happy to see you guys again maybe virtually for now and uh, stay safe, stay, uh, take care guys and take all the necessary precautions um, during these tough times and uh, see you guys later. Appreciate okay. you guys, and, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.